Hello, everyone. Let's continue our discussion on the inquiry. So from the previous few videos, we have introduced the, how important the inquiry is in, the, in our consultation. That's how we gather the information from the patient. And also we want to gather the most authentic information from the patient. So, and then from the previous video, we also have introduced the full picture of the inquiry, what needs to be included in the inquiry, such as the general information, the present disease, the past disease, the family, family history, and so on. So these information is the information we need for your medical case, and for your diagnosis. So, and then for the inquiry, we actually going to focus on the present symptoms. So the present disease. In the present, in the present disease, we are going to ask about the onset, the development, or the treatment accepted, the previous treatments, and what's the result. And then, more important from here is the present symptoms. So the present symptoms refers to the symptoms when the patients, the symptoms that the patient can feel, or the symptoms that the patient is experiencing while they were seeing you. So that's the present symptoms. And that's the most important aspect from the inquiry because we because we want to understand, we want to know how the patient feel right now. What are the symptoms right now? That's why we need the in, inquiry, certain questions on the present symptoms. And then from the history. The practitioners already knew how important the inquiry was. So generation by generation, we eventually developed to the questions that we what, what questions that we need to ask. The ten questions. The ten questions initially was described in Jing Yue Quan Shu, so that's in Ming Dynasty a few hundred years ago, and then um, these 10 questions were modified by another practitioner in Qing Dynasty about 200 years ago, and until now we're still using these 10 questions. So for the discussion in these few videos, for the, in the inquiry of present symptoms, we actually know mostly based on these 10 questions. The only symptoms that we are asking but not present on in these questions is the sleeping. So the 10 questions are very important. What you need to do for these 10 questions, you need to memorize, you need to memorize them. So you need to keep in, in mind that what need to be asked. For instance, if you see a patient or now you study at UJ and your families, your friends knew that you were studying at UJ now during your winter holiday, during your school holiday, and then your relatives ask you to inquire with you some medical situations or medical conditions but you need to ask, ask them some questions how to ask the questions and what questions need to be asked if you don't know how if you remember these 10 questions then you can ask one by one from these 10, ten questions this will help you to start a conversation. Also, will help you to start the diagnosis. To 
understand the disease, to understand the excess deficiency or in or yang patterns of the patient. So the 10 questions you need to remember and then the, from the 10 questions you will see the first question is about the cold and hot while the second question is related to sweating. So firstly we will ask the patient the cold and hot, the coldness and heat. On the coldness and heat, this, this kind of feeling, we can indicate it can indicate the yin and yang also of the antipathogenic qi or as well as the excess or deficiency of the pathogens or at, at of the pathogenic qi. So that's why we're going to introduce these one by one from here, just give you a general information or a full pictures of inquiry what in questions will be included in the whole inquiry the seconds we also need to ask about the sweating so later when we talk about sweating you will know what kinds of sweating we, we need to distinguish and what kinds of sweating can reflect what kinds of situation. The third question is about the head and body. So from the third question, we need to ask about do they feel anything discomfort in the head or in any part of the body? This can reflect as such as the headache or body ache. The fourth question is related to the defecation. So we want to ask about the, the defecation, the bowel, bowel movements. The fifth question is about the appetite, while the sixth question is related to the chest and abdomen. So this, we, we have asked about the head and the body, and then now we ask about the chest and the abdomen. So actually we ask about is there any discomfort physically in the body. The seventh and eighth questions are related to hearing and thirst. The ninth question is regarding the previous disease and the tenth question is related to the causes. So what caused the disease? Apart from these, menstruation should be asked in females. So these are the 10 questions and as you can see from here, we, from this, why we need to ask these questions, from these different questions, we can see the yin or yang in the, of the body constitution. We can see the yin or yang of the pathogens. We can see the body constitution, we also can see the acquired qi. And though if you ask how can we see from here, then we need to understand what's the cause of these different symptoms, such as what's the cause of sweating, what the appetites can reflect the previous diseases, what's the cause of diseases, and defecation, why defecation is so important and what the defecation can imply the situation. So these are the information, these are the knowledge we are going to study. In the, pre, in the previous videos, in the general introduction, we have introduced that in the diagnostic study, in this course, we need to we need to focus on the definition of the medical terms and also the pathogenesis or the causes of these symptoms, such as cold or coldness or hot or sweating. What does it mean? What's the definition of sweating? 
what kind of symptoms is considered as sweating? So sometimes some some words some words are quite obvious, like sweating. Every, everyone knows about sweating, but do you really understand what sweating? What's the symptoms of sweating? And how many different types of sweating? So that's the that's the the contents begin to study each of them. So from the study, we, the most important is here uh, in the diagnostics is to understand the definition of the terms such as cold, coldness, or hot. What's the definition of them? What kinds of manifestation we consider as coldness? And then we you also need to understand what's the cause. So that's how to use the previous theories in the basic basic theory to understand these manifestations. Okay, so firstly we're going to talk about the coldness and heat, the present symptoms. The coldness. The coldness is the feeling reported by the patient. It could be described as cold sensation or chilling sensation. Heat or hot. In Chinese medicine theories, it's a very complicated symptom, ranging from feeling hot to higher than normal body temperature. So from this description, we will see that the hot feeling of the patient. It can be fever, it also can be no fever. That's why we don't really want to use the, the words body temperature. We don't really use the term that inquire, inquiry of coldness and heat. We don't really use the such as inquiry of body temperature replace this description. The reason is because the heat can be normal body temperature. It also can refer to fever. So this this the this kind of manifestation, as you can see from the definition. It's, it is actually the feeling, the feelings that the patient will tell you. That's also the feelings only the patient themselves can tell you. You cannot test, you cannot examine from any kind of machine or devices, such as the coldness. And sometimes you will ask that you can use a thermometer to check the body temperature. That is true, but as you can see from here, the fever, the higher, the high body temperature is only a part of the definition of heat. Of the heat, the patient also can have normal body temperature. So it doesn't, it, the, the hot feeling, when if the patient feel hot, doesn't mean doesn't mean the patient has to have fever. And when we study the coldness and the heat or the hot feeling, when we understand these terms, we need to think about what's the what's the cause of these these feelings? What's the cause of the heat? Of the hot feeling? What's the cause of the coldness? Cold, the cold feeling in the body. In from our basic theory, what's the, what's the cause of the cold feeling or hot feeling? So the cold feeling and hot feeling, it it is actually reflect the yin and yang situation in the body. The the hot feeling. Is excess yang. The cold feeling is excess yin. The excess yin can be excess yin. It also can be relative excess yin. 
we're going to discuss in details what does it mean by relative SSE. The relative SSE is actually because of Yang deficiency. So the, when you compare with the two Yin and Yang, when they balance, everything is balanced. You, you cause like a one portion of Yin, you also have one portion of Yang, then you can balance. But the relative SSE in this situation, the Yin is still one portion, but for instance, if you only have a half portion of Yang, so compare with the, the half portion, you got the half portion of Yang, and you got the half portion of Yin SS. In this situation, the patient also presents as coldness. So in order to understand the cold, the coldness and the heat, the cold feeling or the hot feeling, you need to understand that the cold and hot are belongs the cold and hot belongs to different category of yin and yang and also from the coldness and hot and the heat we can see the yin and yang the volume of yin and yang in the body that's exactly why from yin and yang we talk about we study about yin and yang we study a lot about different pathogens what do you see in and yang? Obviously, that we cannot see in and yang. But what we can see from the patient is the coldness and heat. Which the cold feeling that we can ask from the patient, the hot feeling from the patient's answers, and this coldness and heat can reflect the yin and yang in the body. So that's exactly why different pathogens or yin and yang we don't see, but how do we know these terms? That's from the manifestations, because the coldness represents as in the heat represents as yang. That's why if you want to see yin and yang situation, yin and yang condition of the body. You can ask about the coldness and heat. The first question we are going to discuss here is the coldness. How many types of different coldness we need to differentiate? There are three different types of coldness. The first one, aversion to wind. The second one, intolerance to cold. And the last one, aversion to cold. So why we need to use three different terms to describe to describe one same symptoms of coldness? That's because of these three different types we may have because we in clinics we may have different manifestations and these different manifestations can reflect different pathogens or different body constitution. That's why we need to use different terms to describe different symptoms. The first one, aversion to wind, refers to uh, the feeling of coldness when patients are exposed to wind, and their symptoms can be alleviated by staying away from wind. And the second, intolerance to cold, refers to a sensation of coldness that can be alleviated by putting on more clothes or blankets or staying closer to fireplace. Aversion to cold refers to a sensation of the coldness that cannot be resolved by putting more clothes or staying closer to a fireplace. So as you can see from the description, on the definitions of the three different terms of coldness, you can see that all patients of these three different types, they do have a sensation of coldness. They can feel cold, but aversion to wind 
The symptoms can be alleviated by staying away from the wind. And in other words, the symptoms will be worse if there is wind. The second intolerance to cold and aversion to cold. The only difference between these two is whether or not the patient, the, the feeling of coldness can be alleviated by dressing more or stay closer to a fireplace or a heater. The reason why we need to differentiate these, these different manifestations is because these different manifestations got different pathogenesis. It also can indicate different pathogens or body constitution, such as the intolerance to cold. So in this situation, the patient, the symptoms can be alleviated by staying closer to a fireplace or a heater or in a warm environment. You can see from here, this, this patient, the symptom of feeling cold can be alleviated by in a warm environment, which means that the, the patient might suffer from exogenous pathogens of coldness. So this coldness is from external, from outside to invade the body. Once the pathogen invade our body, the pathogen will go from will goes from the nose, the mouth, or the skin, and to the internal body. That's why if we change the environment. We stay closer to the fireplace. The, the feeding will be the, the feeding of coldness will be alleviated. That's because we reduce the in the pathogen, the exogenous pathogen. Aversion to cold. This patient cannot be alleviated by dressing more or stay in a warm environment. The reason is because this kind of coldness is, is from internal. The patient feels the cold from internal. The internal coldness, you still remember which pathogen can cause internal coldness. The five internal pathogens or the five evils, internal evils, you still remember in the basic theories, we said internal cold, internal coldness. So the internal coldness can reflect the yang deficiency of the body. So that's why if, the, if a patient tells you that they feel cold, if you ask them, do you feel better once you dress more? Do you want to dress more? And once it, or if you sit next to a heater, you feel relief. This can help us to distinguish the exogenous pathogens or internal pathogens. You see, that's why we need to ask the patient on the inquiry. Also, the coldness and hot feeding, we can't test. The second, the different tones of a heat. The heat, also the hot feeling. The first one is fever. Fever is the phenomenon that the body temperature is above normal level. Generally agreed to be 30 degree. And the heat also can refer to hot sensation. The hot sensation is subjectively feeling of heat over the body while the temperature could be perfectly normal. So that's exactly why we don't want to use different tones of temperature because the hot feeding, the hot sensation, the patient can present as fever or no fever. Sometimes the patient only feels hot in the body or in certain parts of the body. 
such as in the palms or in under the soles, soles they can feel the hot sensation. And we're also going to ask where they're going to feel, where they feed, they are feeding the, the hot sensation, because these also can reflect different body constitution or different pathogens, such as the, the hot sensation in the palms or under the soles. We can conclude that the patient suffer from indeficiency. And why the patient will suffer from indeficiency while they have this sensation? We're going to discuss in future when we discuss the specific feelings in different areas. So as you can see from here, even coldness and heat and hot feeling, we got different terms, and from these terms, we can see the yin and yang condition of the body. That's why it's very important to ask the patient and ask in details what kinds of coldness or what kinds of hot feeling they are experiencing. And how severe this situation or also when do they feel worse? When do they feel cold in the morning, in the afternoon or in the evening? Or the hot sensation, do they feel in the morning or afternoon or evening? These, how severe they are, different times and the duration of the, the feeding, as well as the location of where they feel can reflect different situations. So from this slide, we're going to have a quick revision on the coldness and heat. What's the significance of asking coldness and heat? From here, we need to think about this, what the coldness and heat can represent. The coldness and heat is determined by the nature of the pathogen and the excess or deficiency of yin and yang. So if we got Yang deficiency, which means we don't have enough yang in the body. For instance, the yang is only so from this circle, from this line, we don't have this part. So you will see this now the yin and yang is not balanced. Right? For this amount of yin. We don't have enough amount of yang to balance. So we got yang deficiency in this situation. For the yang deficiency, which means we got excess in. Excess in will cause the coldness in the body. That's why we need to ask the feelings. If the if the patient got excess if the patient feel coldness, they feel cold, which means they got excess in. Because excess in, they can be relative to excess, which means yang, which means yang deficiency. They also can have excess in, which means they got excess in in this situation. In this situation, if they have excess in this part, they also will have. So in this situation, we also get excess in, which is also cold. So a patient feel coldness. You can assume that they got excess in, but this is excess in can be the in they got too much. It also can be relative to excess, which means yang deficiency. So when you see the coldness, you will think about two aspects for the deficiency. Excess in or yang deficiency can cause the coldness. Same as the other side. If the patient feel hot, the patient is experiencing hot feeling. This can be relative to hot, relative to excess yang, which means indeficiency, or the patient has too much yang. If the patient got excess yang, or that the patient have not enough in, this also will cause the hot feeling. 
So from the inquiry of coldness and heat, we can see the patient, the pathogens or the body constitution, the imbalance of yin and yang. So in order to understand well the coldness and heat, you need to understand what's the cause of the cold, what's the cause of the cold and hot feeding in the body. How do we understand from the theory? How do we understand the cold of hot feeling? Okay, from the next video, we are going to talk about the different situations of coldness and heat. Thank you guys.